welcome to Salento with love. I think I'm in a corner of paradise. I'm David Mengoli. Today, I would like to tell you a beautiful story. I think our past is always important to understand our future. Dry stone walls, the cicadas in the background, and an olive grove. What is this story about? Well, this story is about a very wealthy past. Salento, Puglia, one of the richest and wealthiest places in Southern Europe in the 15th, 16th, 17th, and even the beginning of the 18th century. Why? Because of this, because of olives. When you think of olive oil today, in 2023, you are thinking olive oil, food, gourmet, cold press, extra virgin olive oil. I would like you to step back into the, maybe the 15th century, maybe the 16th century, and even the 17th, and a little bit of the 18th, and think about lighting. Yes, lighting. The olive oil that was produced in Salento was responsible to create and generate light. I would like you to think through the course of this video as the oil of the past, as the crude oil of the Arab countries, which they have become so wealthy over the last 100 years as a result of discovering crude oil. Now, can you imagine the oil that was produced here in Salento was shipped all over Europe. But how did it get here? More than a thousand years ago, we had wonderful olive trees here in Salento. But then the Byzantine monks coming from the Middle East came over, bringing new techniques, bringing ways of actually producing the oil, which made Salento a very rich place. They started to graft into the olive trees that were here in Salento a new variety. And where before they were collecting the olives from the ground here, can you imagine these grounds were full of olive dropping down in the month of October, November, December, and they were getting collected and they were getting pressed to produce oil that was then burnt while the Byzantine monks brought in a technique apart from a new type of olive that made Salento very rich, yes. Because the oil that was getting made using these techniques, which he was actually picking the olive from the trees, and the techniques that implemented by the Byzantine monks were actually producing an oil that was smokeless. Can you imagine cities around Europe, London, Paris, Frankfurt, and all the other big cities in the middle of the 17th century, 18th century is growing, houses, factories, they needed to have light. Yes, electricity only came after. So they needed to actually lit up their environments. Olive oil, smokeless olive oil was the answer. Do you know that in the 15, in the middle of the 15th century, Salento was in the hands of the Spanish and they actually ordered the construction of a road going from Naples, going through Taranto, coming all the way down to Gallipoli and spreading. And this was because the transportation of olive oil was so important. Can you imagine this olive oil being shipped? The port of Gallipoli, the port of Taranto, the port of Otranto, they were responsible for shipping on a daily basis thousands and thousands of liters of olive oil. Well, in return, this brought an incredible wealth to the land of Salento. When you think of the Baroque architecture, you're looking at the affreschi, you're looking at the churches. Have you ever stopped and wonder where did all the wealth came from to build so much beauty? It came from olive oil. Just, just thinking about it, the wealth that olive oil brought to this land, it was second to none. It was the richest place to be. Now the heritage that that's left to us it's extraordinary. We are now stepping into beautiful Palazzi without even thinking for a second that all of that wealth was generated by this, olives. Olives were generating wealth. Now this wealth continued to grow 
And at the end of the 18th century, a lot of things started to happen. How oh, well, we had uh, fat well coming, we had the paraffin from the petroleum at the end of the 1800s, and the decline of these millions of trees planted in Puglia. But only 10 years ago, there was something else that actually contributed to an incredible decline, not just of the production of the oil, but also of this very special environment, even the sound. It's so special. Let's talk about what changed here in Salento about 10 years ago. We've spoken about the past, the wealthy past, the beautiful construction and buildings, the present, we need to look at the future. So let's try to understand how we can make the difference for our future. Silella fastidiosa. What a disaster. Totally dead. This tree is uh, probably 200 years old. We are surrounded by trees which are hundreds of years old, which they are totally dead. There's two varieties here in Salento that are unfortunately affected. 2013, Xylella appears onto the scene. Some people call it Lella. Don't really know. Some think that uh, probably some coffee from Costa Rica brought the bacteria that was responsible for the Xylella. And these um, insects, which are part of our environment here, get contaminated. And when a tree gets infected, this sputachina, this little fly, gets contaminated and just brings it to another tree and another tree. And within a couple of years, the tree dies. Almost like the way cholesterol works in our veins. It literally clogs up the system, the lymphatic system of a tree. Just no life. And gradually you start seeing some dead branches and over a period of two years, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, the tree dies. What a disaster. Just in Salento, nine million hectares of land covered with olive trees. More than 60 million trees in the area of Salento. Now, if the population of Italy is about 60 million, it means that every single Italian has one tree. Of the 60 million at the moment, more than 25 million have already died. Now you may feel, well, poor Salento, you were so unlucky to lose all these beautiful olive trees that have been here for centuries. But this is something that is happening all over the world. Yes, this phenomenon is something that is happening. Have you heard, for example, of the rapid apple decline? This is a disease in the United States which is actually killing thousands of apple trees. Have you heard, for example, of the beech trees that are dying in Canada, Ohio and different other parts of the United States? It's a mysterious disease. Scientists from all over the world are trying to understand what's happening to these trees. Have you heard to the palm trees in Florida that they're actually dying from a different type of disease. Now, all of these things happening around the world may be a sign. Maybe the world is becoming small. Maybe things are moving around too quickly. So what happened here in Salento that attacked this specific species of olive trees is not 
something to do with the area, but it's something to do with the world. Now, it's amazing to think that these trees have survived for hundreds of years, centuries, have given work and wealth to millions of people that have lived through this period of history. Now, they're all dying. Now, the question is, what can we do to secure for future generations, not just an extraordinary landscape, oxygen, an amazing environment, but also a very special olive oil that is cultivated in this land. Well, let's go now and see how can we be responsible for making sure that the future, it's olive oil in Salento. This is the future. And just before we move on, I would like to introduce you to the, one of the key people that actually is carving the future. Just like the Byzantine monks made that present or that past becoming so wealthy, some people have done exactly the same today in Salento. Now, would you like to meet one of these key people? Let's go, come with me. Hey, ciao Alessandro. Ciao, how are you there? Buongiorno. Alessandro. Ciao right. Simone. Ciao, buongiorno. I'd like to introduce you to Alessandro Coricciati, the president of Olivami. Buongiorno. Cosa, Presidente, cosa abbiamo qui? Questo è un albero di favolosa al terzo anno con le olive sopra che stanno crescendo. È, è uno, de, uno delle specie delle, sì, delle olive. Abbiamo no? due varietà, la favolosa e il leccino. Che è resistente, che è resistente alla xylella. Alla xylella. Uh, Alessandro è responsabile per piantare quante migliaia di alberi adesso? Al momento uh, siamo sui 25.000 alberi. Over 25.000. This association has been responsible for planting trees that are resistant to the xylella virus. E questi già sono al terzo anno? Sì, questo è il terzo anno di vita. Da dove ti è venuta questa idea? È venuta perché noi in questa fase, fino al sesto o settimo anno, abbiamo bisogno di risorse per far crescere nel migliore dei modi gli alberi e mandarli in produzione. Il terzo anno le fanno, non è che non le fanno, ma sono pochissime rispetto a quello che producevamo prima con gli olivi secolari. Ci è venuta questa idea di adottare gli alberi e cercare l'aiuto alle persone. Come un ragazzo, no? Ha bisogno, ragazzo, di, bisogno di, di supporto. Poi dopo l'università comincia a produrre. No. E hai fatto sempre questo come lavoro? Sì, sì, sì. Da sempre, da quattro generazioni. Quindi e quindi quando è arrivata la xylella è un disastro? È un disastro. Tutt'oggi è un disastro. Perché ha distrutto tutti gli, gli olivi che avevamo, abbassando totalmente la produzione e eh, lasciandoci con questa speranza, diciamo. Che so the production zero. prior to Xylella was over a thousand uh, liters, no, a thousand tons, mille quintali. Mille quintali, sì. Mille quintali, that's a... Centomila litri. Yeah, a hundred thousand liters of oil before the Xylella. Now they're actually dropped down to quite small numbers. And for four generations it's been involved, so a very large company producing and exporting olive oil so you can imagine the impact onto the area but also anche diciamo l'aspetto ambientale di paesaggio no? che è cambiato totalmente perché prima era tutto arricchito di questi belli alberi e adesso noi stiamo cercando anche quello di ripopolare le nostre terre ma anche gli altri associati con le nuove piantumazioni per vedere il verde per contribuire all'abbassamento dell'inquinamento, perché l'albero di olivo assorbe il CO2. Alessandro, noi ti lasciamo andare perché sappiamo che okay. non ti piace stare davanti alla telecamera. Ti lascio in buone mani, c'è Simone. Ma è stato un amazing job qui in Salento. Posso dire che stiamo andando molto bene, però possiamo fare ancora di meglio. Fantastico. Let's talk a little bit more about Oliver May in the next few minutes without Alessandro. We'll let him go. Grazie Alessandro. Ciao, grazie a te. Now that Alessandro has moved on, the founder of Oliva Me. I'm here with Simone Chiriatti. Simone, che lavoro incredibile questo di Oliva Me. Eh? Sì, bellissimo. Bellissimo, un lavoro fatto di speranza e soprattutto di vision per il futuro. Sì, è, un, è un oliveto nuovo? Sì. Circa due anni, tre anni forse, no? Sì, questo c'ha tre anni. Three years. So, it's interesting. Let's talk about, for a few minutes, about Oliva Me and what Oliva Me has actually created and is looking at creating for future and future generations. Cioè, Oliva mi nasce da me e Alessandro. Mi raccontava del, della distruzione, delle difficoltà che la Xylella ha portato in Salento e poi della volontà parallela di imprenditori, di banchieri, 
diciamo, facoltosi, gente facoltosa di voler fare qualcosa per il territorio perché erano rattristiti eh, di vedere un territorio che col passare degli anni stava ingrigendo. E loro venivano qui alla ricerca della natura perché chi viene in Salento viene perché cerca quell'esperienza di natura, mm. no? perché lascia la città dove la vita è frenetica, dove la vita è fatta di palazzi, appartamenti, di grigio, viene qui a, a, per cercare la natura. Ecco, quella natura che è venuta a mancare ha fatto nascere nelle persone, nei turisti, soprattutto stranieri, eh, quel bisogno di aiutare. Volevano aiutare, volevano aiutare il territorio e chiedevano come possiamo aiutarvi no? okay. per riportare il verde nel, nel Salento. Proprio da questo ragionamento che ci, fa, ci hanno fatto queste persone nasce l'associazione. So here is where Oliver mi starts. Siccome eh, eh, era una cosa bellissima quella che ci era stata proposta, allargare e questa modalità anche ad altre persone, cercando di legarle anche al territorio. The, their passion wasn't related to generating revenue, but it was very much about bringing the beauty that it was lost through a disease. So I find this actually to be a, a, an expression of passion as well, or compassion. La perdita di alberi d'olivo secolari, che comunque l'albero d'olivo in sé già rappresenta una delle principali eh, specie che diciamo, sottrae CO2 dall'ambiente, rappresenta per noi un, la perdita di un polmone. So without, probably, well, hopefully the subtitles at the bottom, yes, Ludovica, yes. <laughs> well, you could probably capture a lot of the things that Simone is saying. Let's talk about Oliva Me. When, when I heard about the association and what they were doing, this was probably a year and a half ago, I thought, hmm, it's interesting. But now I've seen that it's picked up so much momentum and I think it's extraordinary what they're doing. The idea of adopting a tree. So we're here to talk about specifically <laughs> what you can do to contribute to this beautiful area, but also to contribute to your table in the sense of actually having some olive oil that it's from Puglia. So adopting a tree, come funziona? Semente molto semplice. Abbiamo un sito web molto semplice da navigare, www.olivami.com, dove le persone possono eh, connettersi e scegliere il numero di alberi da adottare. In doppia lingua. In doppia lingua, italiano e inglese. What happens? Prima cosa che verrà chiesta è di assegnare un nome all'albero. La cosa sorprendente è che molti assegnano per esempio il nome del padre, il nome della madre, il nome del figlio, facendo quindi una dedica, no? regalando un pezzo di Salento, eh, o il nome del proprio pet, no? del proprio animale domestico. So, after you've given the name, you also need to decide if you are donating the tree or if the tree is for yourself. And it's interesting, while we were doing this this morning, we were filming, somebody arrived to find and search for their tree. They had the Google map position, they had a lot of position in the Google yeah, map. <laughs> and it was a gift actually for his 40th wedding anniversary. So this is true, this is working. So Quindi, after that, after you've decided if it's a gift or if it's yourself, the name, you choose the number of trees that you would like to adopt. Si aggiungono questi alberi nella propria carriola, noi diciamo. Sì, è come un e-commerce, tu aggiungi al carrello, noi aggiungi nella carriola. <laughs> E, e procedi col pagamento. How much does it cost to adopt one tree for one year here in Salento? And it is 31 euros and 79 cents. Now for 31 euros and 79 cents per year, you can be the owner of a beautiful tree that is growing here in Salento. But it doesn't end there. Il premio che noi riconosciamo alle persone che contribuiscono a ricostruire il nostro territorio. Riconosciamo un litro di olio per i primi tre anni. Well, for the first three years, every year you will receive one liter of olive oil that is produced here in Salento. One liter. Isn't that amazing? And it gets shipped across to you anywhere in Europe. So if you're in the United States, Maybe you'll have to find another way of getting yeah, it. Puoi ritirarlo dal frantoio. Or you can simply adopt the trees because it's just beautiful to contribute to such sì. an amazing, innovative really way of replanting trees in this part of the world. Fourth and fifth year, you get two liters for the same amount, 31 euro 79, you get two liters. And on the sixth year, sixth year, you get Three liters, and after that, three liters every year, providing you continue to pay the 31 euros 79 cents. Sì, sì, l'intenzione è quella di far godere poi alle persone che ci stanno aiutando del frutto del proprio albero. Quello che viene generato immediatamente, subito do dopo l'adozione, è quel certificato di adozione che abbiamo visto prima, dove c'è un QR code con la posizione GPS del dell'uliveto in cui è piantato l'albero. 
e su ogni albero viene appesa una targhetta e, e poi ovviamente è possibile venire a visitare il proprio olivo in qualsiasi momento esiste una pagina sempre sul nostro sito in cui si può prenotare la visita e quindi ci sarà Stefano che vi accompagnerà sul nostro terreno a trovare il vostro albero If I adopt multiple trees, do I always pay 31 euro 79 per tree? No, no, il costo si riduce eh, in funzione della quantità quindi il, se ne adotto 5 andrò a pagare 27 euro ogni albero And if I adopt 10 it will drop down even esatto. more And you can do this just by going onto the website www.olivame.com Start the process and see how much it will cost you per year to adopt trees here. He told me something quite interesting while we were preparing for this. The idea of companies adopting trees. So you could be a company, tax deductible, you can adopt 50 trees, 100 trees. And then imagine you can donate some of these trees to some of your clients and you can donate the oil that the trees produce to some of your clients. Dato è vista anche come un'attività di sostenibilità che le aziende possono intraprendere su un territorio controllato, contribuendo alla ricreazione del paesaggio che è stato distrutto, ma anche alla ricostruzione dei posti di lavoro che questo ha, ha distrutto. It's not the funds that they come through as a result of you adopting a tree and not just used to plant a tree and looking after a tree but part of those funds are also to buy additional trees which get donated to people that potentially will never replant trees. So really through this association they're not just populating their own lands with trees that you are adopting but they're also giving the opportunity to people that potentially will never replant olive trees maybe because they're aged, maybe they're in their 70s, maybe they're in their 80s, the children uh, probably live far away in different countries So what they do, it's buying smaller trees and donating it to these people so they can actually replant to give to future generation again the hope of an amazing environment here in Salento. Il futuro, come lo vedi? Eh, io lo vedo verde, soprattutto se continuiamo con questa grande partecipazione, con questo grande coinvolgimento che stiamo, stiamo avendo da parte di altre persone. L'obiettivo è quello di crescere. Uh, it's, it's just really very touchy to, to understand that sometimes if the local people don't see the potential, people that come from outside, people that are adopting these trees, and also the diversification and things that planting new trees could bring back to the territory, it's amazing in terms of what he can do for, for this land here with an incredible heritage when it comes to the production and the export of olive oil. Grazie Simone. Grazie a voi. Grazie mille a voi. Grazie. Davvero. Ne adottiamo tanti. Thank you Simone. Thank you Alessandro that is not with us anymore. The question is how many trees are you going to adopt here in Salento? Are you going to be one of those people that would like to see again the future to be green, driving around the country lanes of Salento or your children to drive through the country lanes of Salento or the future generations and to see that wealth that was once present here. The sound of the cicadas are telling us that that is exactly what you've got to do. So check the website www.oliverme, it's right at the bottom there, .com and be generous because the future, it's green.